Long before humans ever set foot on this planet, the oceans belonged to a true giant. A predator so massive it made today's great white shark look like a guppy. This was Megalodon, the largest shark to ever live. Growing up to 18 meters long, heavier than a school bus, and armed with a bite force three times stronger than a T, Rex, Megalodon ruled the seas as the ultimate apex predator. For nearly 20 million years, nothing dared to challenge it. And then, suddenly, it was gone, disappearing about 3.6 million years ago. But what if it wasn't? What if somewhere, in the depths of today's oceans, Megalodon still lurked? How would our world change, and could humans even survive sharing the planet with this monster? To understand the rise of Megalodon, we need to travel back to the Miocene and Pliocene epochs between 23 and 3.6 million years ago. Earth's climate was warmer, sea levels were higher, and the oceans teemed with life. Coastlines stretched across the globe, home to vast kelp forests, colorful reefs, and thriving ecosystems. Whales glided through the open waters, early dolphins hunted in pods, and primitive seals played in the shallows. But among this abundance swam the ocean's undisputed ruler, Megalodon. At lengths of up to 18 meters and weighing as much as 60 tons, it was a true leviathan. Its skeleton was built not for speed, but for raw power. With jaws wide enough to swallow a human whole and teeth the size of a human hand, Megalodon claimed the very top of the food chain. For nearly 20 million years, no creature rivaled its dominance. It was the definition of an apex predator. Fossil evidence tells us exactly how terrifying Megalodon was as a hunter. Paleontologists have found ancient whale bones scarred with deep bite marks, proof of jaws powerful enough to crush bone in a single strike. Megalodon likely relied on ambush tactics, attacking from below where its prey couldn't see it coming. With a sudden burst of speed, it would slam into its target, clamping down with serrated teeth designed to slice through flesh and bone alike. Its prey list was a who's who of ocean giants, baleen whales, dolphins, large fish, and even other sharks. Some evidence even suggests Megalodon may have turned on members of its own species when food was scarce. The strategy was simple but devastating. Cripple the victim with a massive bite, then stalk it as it weakened before moving in to finish the kill. In prehistoric oceans, nothing stood a chance. For nearly 20 million years, Megalodon ruled without challenge. But even the greatest predator can't escape the forces of nature. During the Pliocene epoch, Earth's climate began to cool. Sea levels dropped, ocean currents shifted, and ecosystems were reshaped. The once warm waters that Megalodon thrived in started to disappear. At the same time, its main prey, large whales, were in decline. With fewer whales to feed on, Megalodon faced an increasing struggle for survival. To make matters worse, new competitors arrived on the scene. Faster and more adaptable predators, like early great white sharks and orcas, began taking advantage of the changing oceans. After millions of years at the top, Megalodon could no longer keep up. Around 3.6 million years ago, the giant shark vanished, leaving behind nothing but its massive fossilized teeth as reminders of its reign. Now imagine for a moment that Megalodon never went extinct, that somehow these giants still swam in our oceans today. The impact would be immediate and dramatic. As apex predators, Megalodons wouldn't just hunt for food, they would reshape entire ecosystems. Whales, dolphins, and other large marine animals would become their primary targets. With whale populations pushed to the brink, the effects would ripple through the food chain in what scientists call a trophic cascade. Fewer whales would mean less grazing on krill. As a result, krill populations could explode altering plankton levels and disrupting ecosystems from the surface all the way down to the seabed. 
other predators would also feel the pressure. Sharks, orcas, and even giant squid might be forced into new hunting grounds, either deeper into the ocean or into colder waters where megalodon couldn't thrive. Some species could adapt, while others might face extinction themselves. In short, megalodon's return wouldn't just bring back a monster shark, it would completely rewire the balance of marine life on a global scale. The oceans as we know them today would look very, very different. So what would megalodon mean for us? The good news, humans wouldn't be its main target. Compared to whales and dolphins, we're too small to be worth the effort. But that doesn't mean we'd be safe. Megalodon loved coastal waters, the same areas where we swim, fish, and build tourist industries. Collisions and accidental encounters would be inevitable. Picture this. A whale-watching boat heading out for a relaxing tour suddenly finds itself stalked by a shadow the size of a bus below the waves, or fishing crews pulling up their nets, only to realize they've attracted the attention of a 60-ton predator. Even small boats and coastal divers could be at risk if Megalodon mistook them for easy prey. The real impact, though, wouldn't just be physical, it would be psychological. News of a single Megalodon attack would spread like wildfire, triggering global panic. Beaches could empty overnight, fishing industries might collapse, and governments would be forced to impose strict new safety laws for anyone entering the ocean. In short, Megalodon's presence wouldn't just reshape marine life, it would change how humanity interacts with the sea itself.